hey guys welcome back so today we'll be learning about malocclusions and their clinical features so we all know that uh, the edward angle he introduced a system of malocclusion in the year 1899 and it is the most simplest form of classification of malocclusion used till date according to angle the maxillary first permanent molar is the key to occlusion so based on the relationship of the lower first permanent molar to the upper first permanent molar angle classified malocclusions into three main classes that is class 1 class 2 and class 3 and we are going to read and learn them one by one and their clinical features moving on to first and foremost that is class 1 malocclusion so it is the type of localized malocclusion and this localized malocclusion can be in the form of displaced or impacted teeth or any anomaly of the size, shape or number of the teeth. Moving on to the clinical feature, first thing we need to remember is in class 1 type of malocclusion, the skeletal relation and the muscle tone are absolutely normal and the molars are in angles class 1 relationship. So what is angles class 1 relationship is the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar it occludes in the buccal group of the mandibular first molar so this is called as class 1 molar relationship in class 1 malocclusion there might be presence of dental irregularities such as spacing crowding rotations and missing teeth and uh, lastly the variable of class 1 malocclusion is class 1 bimaxillary protrusion so in class 1 bimaxillary protrusion, the patient still exhibits a normal class 1 relationship but the dentition of both upper as well as lower arches are forwardly placed in relation to facial profile. So though both upper and lower dentition are forwardly placed, the molars are still in class 1 relationship. So that is why this bimaxillary protrusion is considered under class 1 malocclusion. So the main deciding factor is the molar relationship. Moving on to class 2 malocclusion, so class 2 malocclusion is divided into two types, division 1 and division 2. So focusing on division 1 first, so clinical features are as it is class 2 malocclusion, the molar relationship is angles class 2 type. The mesiobuccal cusp of maxillary first molar, it occludes anteriorly to the buccal group of the mandibular first molar. Secondly, in case of class 2 malocclusion, the upper incisors are always proclined. So as there are proclined upper incisors, there is increased overjet. Because of the proclined upper incisor, the upper lip it becomes hypotonic and short. And as it becomes shorter, there is failure to form lip seal for the patient. And this leads to the incompetency of the lip. Due to incompetency of the lip, the lower lip instead of contacting the upper lip it contacts the palatal aspect of the upper teeth and this phenomena is called as lip trap nextly moving on to the uh, muscles there is hyperactive mentalis which is present in case of class 2 malocclusion so because of this hyperactive mentalis muscle the, it always leads to the mandibular retrognathism moving on to the tongue the tongue it is depressed and occupies a lower posture in the oral cavity so as the tongue occupies the lower posture it always fails to counteract the buccinator activity uh, this buccinator muscle it results in the narrowing of the upper arch in the premolar and canine area and this leads to the formation of v-shaped upper arch so this is usually because of the lowering of the posture of the tongue we will learn class 2 division 2 by comparing it with division 1 so that would be easier so first feature is maxillary anteriors in case of class 2 division 1 the maxillary anteriors are labially inclined as we have read before whereas in class 2 division 2 the central incisors are usually lingually tipped and the lateral incisors are labially tipped as we can see in the figure Moving on to the profile, the profile is usually convex in case of class 2 division 1 whereas in case of class 2 division 2 it is usually mildly convex or normal. Lips are incompetent in case of class 2 division 1 we have read before because of which it gives rise to the lip trap phenomena whereas in case of class 2 division 2 the lips are normal. Muscle hyperactivity if we talk about there is buccinator and mentalis. Uh, muscle hyperactivity in case of class 2 division 1 
whereas no such muscle hyperactivity is present in case of class 2 division 2 arch form if we talk about in case of class 2 division 1 the maxillary arch becomes narrow and v-shaped because of the unrestrained buccinator activity whereas in case of class 2 division 2 the arch form is u-shaped and squarish path of closure is normal for class 2 division 1 whereas path of closure is slightly backwards in case of class 2 division 2 lower facial height is increased in class 2 division 1 whereas lower facial height is decreased in case of class 2 division 2 the lower facial height is decreased in class 2 division 2 because in case of class 2 division 2 usually there is presence of the deep bite so because of the deep bite the lower facial height is decreased moving on to next that is class 3 malocclusion so etiology if we see it is usually because of the mandible which may be large or forwardly placed or maxilla which might be small or retro positioned or combination of both moving on to the clinical features in case of class 3 malocclusions the molars are in class 3 position in this case the mesiobuccal cusp of maxillary first molar it occludes posterior to the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar that is the maxillary first molar it is severely posteriorly positioned relative to that of the mandibular first molar second clinical features if we talk about lower incisors lower incisors are usually lingually inclined or might be straighter there is usually edge to edge or anterior crossbite which is present in case of class 3 malocclusion also the tongue occupies lower position similar to that of class 2 division 1 so the effect which is seen is similar to that of class 2 division 1 that is there is narrowing of the maxillary arch so coming on to the variant that is pseudo class 3 so this type of malocclusion it is produced by the forward movement of the mandible during jaw closure it might be a postural or habitual position of the patient whereas class 3 subdivision it is the condition which is characterized by the class 3 molar relationship on one side and class 1 relation on the other side so on both the side the molar relationships are different on one side it is class 3 molar relation and on another side there is class 1 molar relation so i hope you guys like the video and this would have helped you to uh, revise malocclusions in a quick manner so that's all guys thank you for watching if you like my video please like share and subscribe my channel akshay bandari's gentle videos see you soon with more such content thank you